uh, all the way from Florida. How are you today? Good. How are you doing today? Good, good. Um, let me tell you a little bit um, about Mark, um, and then I'll hand over to him to tell you even more about Mark and his um, great initiative. So he's got a food truck called Kielbasa Bus, and he was just telling us that uh, on top of Kielbasa, he's got lots of other things um, that he um, sells. Um, and um, Mark, tell us, how, how long have you been doing it? When did you set it, set it up initially, your food truck? Uh, we started in March. 2020 of this year yeah so only seven months ago we started the food truck and it was right before the pandemic as we call now the pandemic the covid crisis uh hit so it's been a fun seven months <laughs> let's put it that way and and has it sort of exceeded your expectations in terms of how popular it's become Not to say it exceeded my expectations. I knew that if I work hard and I show my talents and I keep pushing for it, then I knew that it will gain a following. And I just work hard to serve the best food and make everyone happy. You know, the most important part is serving quality instead of quantity. Right. And, it, you know, the reason that I, I know you more than you know me, for example, is because I've been following you guys on Facebook and I know that um, it's your and your mom's initiative. But what, can you take us back to what happened? Like, did you actually wake up one morning and said, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up a food truck? Or how did that, become, that dream become a reality? But before it became a reality, how did it become a dream? So uh, it, it initially started with me always wanting to open my own, my own business. Uh, sorry. Oh, that's the rain. <laughs> Big storm. Wow. Um, so it initially started uh, with me wanting to open my own business. I ran my mom's yoga studio with her for, uh, or I didn't run it with her. I helped her on the side. I also had my own job in school, but uh, I it always I always wanted to open my own business. And so my dad and I would sit down and talk at the end of every night whenever he came home from driving a semi truck. And one night we came up with the idea: well, we cook Polish food for all of our friends and family. Why don't we, you know, cook it to our community? our community so we initially thought of doing like a small bodega restaurant but we saw that food trucks were becoming very popular and that there wasn't anything similar to a polish food truck so then my dad and i said all right let's put our uh, money together and uh let's open a polish food truck and on top of that i started working at a polish restaurant uh here in florida and i started to learn from three different chefs because there is a lot of changing around with people who work there. So I mm -hmm. learned from three different chefs and so three different types of styles of cooking for Polish food. And I or incorporated all of that into cooking what we cook now with the sausage, the bread, loin of pork, the potato pancakes, the stuffed cabbage rolls. And on top of that, um, my mom has this recipe book from the 1970s i swear it's very old it's about this thick and all the pages on are yellow and by the time you find the recipe you're 20 pages in and it's from you know generations and generations of family recipes passed down from my mom's side and my mom also involves some of my dad's side family so it initially started with my father and i wanting to open a business and then uh, my mom is a huge help she helps me with all my facebook uh social media anytime we have anything to cook at home sometimes she will help me and uh, yeah we just work together as a family you see i, I think um I, I think your mom's amazing and i i've not met her i've not met you but i've, I've watched her on, on facebook and we're going to see uh, some screenshots i think of your uh, facebook and it's got a really amazing um, very dynamic social media presence, and that's one of the reasons why I, I was so attracted to it. But I thought actually your mom's your sister, but she looks she looks she looks amazing. She looks very cool, and she practices yoga, and um, and so do you, right? And you even have a podcast with with her. Yes, yes, we do. Every uh, every Monday night, I teach my class, uh, which is short form Ashtanga. Uh, we used to do full form, but it's, it's a very difficult practice. Um, so we do only we only do short form for majority of the community enjoys the short form instead of the full form. So we will do that. And then at the end of the night, around uh, 8.30, 9 p.m., we'll do our short little podcast on Facebook Live. And it's just us uh, sitting down talking about a certain subject matter in yoga, as in uh, breathing, um, control the breath, any practice, uh, poses, the essence behind yoga, what is it, the lifestyle that you can follow, all the good stuff. And 
we'll have tea and we'll have guest speakers come in. And uh, yeah, that's, that's another thing that uh, my mom and I do together on the side, uh, other than just the food truck. We also have the yoga studio. But Mark, it sounds to me like you're a pretty creative person because, um, you know, ranging from cooking to, to, to doing yoga, these are creative pursuits. Um, where did you get it from? So is it your, more your mom or your dad? And, and can, can you tell us more about your Polish heritage? Because you did mention to me earlier that um, your mom is from around Krakow and your dad's from around Warsaw and that you've been to Poland and also that you speak Polish at home, uh, which, which is quite amazing because... Um, that that Polish heritage is really quite important to your family as well, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is very important. I I think the most important aspect that I love about the Polish heritage is that we're very hardworking. You know, it's if it's not if if it's not done with hard work, then it's not you know it's not done right. And we uh, all my dad's I mean my dad's a truck driver. He's been driving for about 30, 40 years, and he's been going at it you know, every week to support the family. My mom has always been working. She's finished school and now she runs her own business. And then uh, I have several other brothers that are also, you know, doing, are also in school and hardworking and working uh, as uh, I have a brother that works for a logistics company and is doing um, and is managing his team. And so now it's my turn to step up to the plate and do what I have to do. So that's what I love about the Polish culture. And not only that, but the food, the food is phenomenal. I've been in love with cooking, so it makes it even better for me that I love my own food that uh, my parents came or my family came from. So, um, yeah. Okay. So tell us about, speaking of the food, what is it that you serve in your food, food pack apart from kielbasa, which is for, for those that don't speak Polish, it means sausage. Um, and, and, and I know that you get it from one special place and it's one particular type of sausage that you actually serve. Is that right? Yes, just one type of sausage because um, that's the best sausage that will go in a sandwich. Most people will enjoy. It's not too spicy. It's not too hot. It's not too sweet. It's not too smoky. It's perfect for the grill. It's already pre-smoked. So the only thing we have to do is toss it on the grill, saute some onions up and put it together on a sub roll. Uh, but we also have, uh, what do we have? <laughs> we have potato pancakes, we have pierogies, we have bread loin of pork, zapiekanki. Oh, wow. We also have specials like stuffed cabbage rolls, and sometimes we'll have wazangi or goulash, or the list is endless. We'll serve anything that's on the uh, Polish culture per se menu, and um, <clears throat> whatever is easier to make or keep for a certain amount of time or I'm able to mass produce, then I'll hold for longer to keep on the menu. But if, if it's anything that takes a long time to make or I'm not able to mass produce it, then I have to make it only as a special because I don't want it to go bad per se. Like mm. if we ever do chanina, like duck blood soup, I don't know if we will. I have had a lot of people ask about it. I mean, I haven't tried to make it myself. I can shoot for it, but that's only good for about 24 hours because mm. it's fresh. Perishable, once, yeah. Yeah, once it goes bad, it goes bad, you know. Okay, so what sort of reaction do you get from people? Because where, where, where you are, are there a lot of people with Polish heritage, actually, or, or not really? Or do you get all kinds um, of people that actually, you know, look at your uh, food truck and they think, I've got to try this? Or do you um, have um, other Polish people come and eat your food? So we live in a rural area, uh, per se. It's growing slowly just because Tampa is an hour away and people live here to uh, and hop on the highway to go to work. But uh, a lot of people, yes, don't know what our food is. And then there's a lot of people that do know our food is. It's about 50-50 sh uh, shot. The Cubasa bus name behind it is what helps a lot people for people to recognize what kind of food it is. If it was named anything else. Um, well, I mean, it could have been Taste of Poland or something like that. But uh, right. the name helps a lot with uh, what kind of food we have. The brand recognition. Of, mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, no, it's about a 50, 50 shot here. Some, if we go to bigger cities, then a lot of people are very familiar with our food. If uh, per se we go to Tampa or we go to uh, Daytona, then every, a lot of people are very familiar with our food. But if we stick around the smaller towns, a lot of people have to, you know, ask questions, what kind of food it is. And once they try it, then they, you know, we're, we're as authentic as it gets. I have my own twist on a few things, but then they really know what Polish food is. Okay. Andrew, can we get you to actually show um, a few images? Because um, 
um, it, it is just so crazily creative. Um, and I, yeah, so we're looking at your Facebook page now, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and that, is that your mum? Yeah, that's my mum. See what I mean? She looks so young. She looks like your sister. She looks amazing. Um, and, and I've seen her with different hair colour uh, every now right. and then. So I think she had it blue at one point. Since I, do, I do follow your, your special Oh, media. blue, pink. I don't even know. The colour list is endless. But it looks like you guys um, have a lot of fun um, also whilst you um, not just cooking the food, but um, serving it, yeah? We have, uh, yeah, we have, we have some stressful days and we have fun days. It all depends on uh, how, uh, how we react to things. But uh, we have, we've, in the past, we had a lot of uh, fallouts per se. And now we figured out how to work with each other. And now we're doing a lot better. You know, when you're, when you're cooking fresh food to order and you're cooking things that have to be kept an eye on, you have about, three pans going a flat top and a fryer all at once. And you're the only one standing on the grill. I, uh, I will tend to lose my patience if somebody will get on my way, but uh, I've learned to fix that myself. And now we work great together. Uh, we know how to communicate to each other. We know what goes on in the kitchen. It's now it's, um, it used to be lots of talking and now there's rarely any talking and we do what we have to do together. Like, um, like gears in, a, in an engine now we work together very well in the truck she does the computer and the cat and then takes care of the customers and i do all the cooking and i have another guy that usually helps us in the back do uh you know cut uh onions or french fries um anything that has to get done in the back while i'm pushing out orders he will take care of and my mom will take care of the customers and we also have um other people that help us work on the register as well uh that work with us and they do a great job as well and ever since we're trying to expand our business, we need, you know, we need people to help us grow. And uh, yeah. So it looks absolutely delicious. And I think your customers look extra happy because the food is plentiful um, and it just looks really yummy. Uh, but you did speak of your plans of expansion. So are, are you a pretty ambitious person? Do you think um, you can take this to the next level? And if so, what is the next level? I would say yes, I'm a very ambitious person. I want to, my, I have, I follow, I follow lots of entrepreneurs that are always working hard and, you know, excuse my language, but busting their ear for, you know, their families and to make something out of life and to make something for the community. So for me to grow, uh, for me, for my business to grow, I have to grow and for, for the business to grow, it's for something to give back, you know, I want to serve Polish food to the entire nation and to the entire world eventually for a good price, for a good price and to fill your, to fill your belly because there's no point of buying food for $50 and you only get two bites about, out of it. Polish food is something that's made to be enjoyed and to fill your stomach. So my goal is to eventually, yes, grow franchise. First, I have to, first steps first is um, I have to get a, uh, some type of building and then I have to, sell out of state and you know i have to start finding ways of growing and expanding just step by step yeah and i think um setting something i guess smaller that's more manageable and that you can you can try out and and you know you've talked about so many very very interesting things but one of the things that i want to know is this um you know you've touched onto it a couple of times but you know the polish values of hard working and um you know just just um being ambitious and always trying your best tell, tell us a bit more about your um family in poland because i, I think you still have cousins and um extended family there Who, who's in poland um yes i do i don't really keep connected with my family in poland just because i've never really met them. i only met them once and that was when i was 16 years old that was the last time i was in poland I don't really talk to them too much. The only people I do talk to is my grandparents, uh, my aunts and uncles that do live here in, in the U.S., and okay. my mom and dad. But other than that, I don't really talk to anyone else outside of the country, uh, except for my brother. He lives in Poland. But um, other than that, just close, close relatives that I speak to, and all of them, you know, all of them have done something or they're all were doing something. And so I... I want to be on, I want to be, you know, I want to show something to my family that I can do something as well.
and I'm sure they they're very proud of you. I think um, I think um, you know when your family is 100% behind you in a venture like this, because you know there's always um, I guess risk of things going wrong, and you know when, when um, they, they do say um, you speak Polish, so you lo you'll understand. It doesn't translate too well into English, but there's a saying that says um, the best time to be with your family is on a family portrait. That's about you know. Yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes um, you, you know. Yeah, we say it's an alepi behodichen as dinchu, as rodina. But but in your case, I think um, it, it's quite a success story because your mum's so involved and everyone's so passionate and and very supportive about um, th this initiative. So um, and, and and as you said, um, I think when you um, have a venture like that, you, you have to have that vision and be very strict with yourself where you're going and how things are done. And you know, your family mem members might have a different opinion about things how it should be done. But are you the boss? Who's the boss of this this whole thing? Or is it your mom? Or is it is it half half? So we have it's it's hard to say. I'm gonna. Uh, my parents know that I work every day. I work every day on the truck, no matter if it's phone calls, scheduling. Uh, I'll do more. I'll do some marketing if I have the time to, or all that. Uh, the boss per se. I think I don't want to put it all on myself because I mean, there's, we're all, we're all working together. I think we're all the boss. Uh, we all have our parts. My dad does the financial end of the okay. deal. Um, my mom takes care of the social media and if there's any help that I need to take care of and I will do, I'll do all the cooking, all the cleaning, anything that has to do with the truck, uh, anything that has to have a face to something, I will be there for that. Uh, but yeah, we all have a part and eventually, you know, the goal is for once, uh, one, the goal is for me to take over everything. It just, the beginning is very difficult just because a lot of the food that we have is very time consuming to where it takes my time away from other things that I can take care mm -hmm. of or that I'm not able to get to because I have to, be. for example, Wednesday and Thursday, we sit at our normal, uh, at a spot that we sit at a, on a corner. Uh, it's called County Line of Mariner. It's a very busy corner. And all we do all day is we take order. It's just two of us working on the truck all day. We take orders that are come in occasionally and we're prepping food all day. We'll be, uh, it's, it, it's eight hour shift and all we're doing is making food and wow. doing a few orders here and there. So, you know, if I had, uh, if I had the time to take some time away from prepping food, I'll be able to take care of some of those financial and uh, social media things. But by the time I get home, especially in this Florida weather, I'm dra I'm drained. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. But it it sounds like a um, it, like a real you've got a really good team behind you. And I think um, you know as you're growing a business and look, I've I've been running this um, this one with with a number of people now. I think we have something like close to forty staff now. But when you first wow. begin. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like giving birth to a baby, right? You have this, right. this idea and you have this image and you have this vision. But what, what actually happens in reality is potentially completely different. Um, and I think if, if you are, as you said, hardworking and um, you can take all that team that you have behind you on that journey, that, that's the secret to success. And, um, yeah. You know, since March, it, it's already a really good success. So, what, what would your customers say about you? Like, what, what would they say about your food? Because it looks amazing. It, it looks, um, you know, so you make everything from scratch, and it's it's just made with love, from what I can see. Yeah, it's made. It's it's definitely you have to for doing it consistently. That there has to definitely be a passion because a lot of I have a lot of people that came to cook with me, uh, that work with me. I have two guys. I have actually sorry, I take that back. I have three guys that work with me right now on the truck, and they are the most loyal, loyal and reliable guys I can ask for that work with me on the truck. Um, I mean, yes, obviously, everyone has their mistakes. We all do. I have my mistakes as well. Uh, but um, no, these guys are awesome. Yes, it does take a lot of love and passion behind it. Everything's made from scratch, uh, except for the pierogi and sausage. I got that from Chicago. But uh, um, oh man, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> What was the, um, question again? The, the question was about the, the leading of the team and having that vision. Um, and what would, what, you, what would your customers say about your food? Yes. Yeah, so the customers say they love the food. A lot of them say they love the food. I check my Facebook reviews every day, uh, especially at the end of every day or, or all of our events, um, because 
those events mean the most to me. They every day it means the most, but those events have the most uh, customers that run through the truck that do come through the truck. And, you know, a lot of people will tell me in person if they enjoy the food and if they do, then I ask them for a review on Facebook. Also, if people don't like the food, they also leave reviews on uh, Facebook. Best that don't like it? Really? What do they like? They, it's just not their cup of tea. Yeah, they don't understand the food per se. The only complaint I had, uh, if it is a complaint, it, I mean, the only complaint I had was my potato pancakes are uh, not to their expectations. They would say, you know, they would say that they, they never... They never had a potato pancake and they got it for the first time. They Hi. they eat it and they say that, oh, this is not what I expected. So, or, you know, then I'll give them something else. But it's, it's, it's a lot of it is about educating your, your customers, right? About, because this, this is a, a, I'm assuming a bit of novelty. And, um, you know, when, when I first came to Australia in 1986, you know, even though we had Italians and Greeks and, you know, the food was pretty, uh, I don't want to say bland because it's, it's, it's really not true, but there was this perception of, um, you, know, you know, having um, meat and three veg and, and anything that was outside of that range was, well, what, what is this, right? Um, right? So I'm sure your potato pancakes are absolutely delicious, but it's just not what people expect. So you kind of have to teach no. them about what it they is and... They think a lot of people think it's like a like a pancake batter, like it's just pancake, you know, shred it up and then you just put it on the pan. But this is cooked on very thin, light thin of uh, it's basically kind of like deep frying it, but it's not. It's on a pan, so it's mm. on a light thin layer of oil, and it's a little. It is a little greasy because it is a delicacy. So by the time uh, by the time you eat it, you bite into it, you expect a pancake like a regular pancake, but instead it's actually made similar to a hash brown which a lot of people unless you put it into that perspective that it is similar to a hash brown then they understand it and then they will enjoy it but if they hear pancake then they think that it's a pancake (laughs) it's yeah it's it's about education and certainly they're not going to be getting a mcdonald's type food um uh, from you they're going to be getting genuine food made with love and um you know you you kind of have to adjust your taste buds a little if, if you're not familiar with it if you've never had it yeah, a lot of people that I that are new to Polish food, I do recommend to them, which is my my personal favorite. There's actually two of my personal favorites. Oh, I enjoy the entire menu, but I'm sure you do. Really good. Uh, the uh, zapiekanki are delicious. Those are are not vegan; they're our vegetarian option. It's a French baguette, uh, buttered down with basil and thyme. Then you have mozzarella and gouda cheese on top, and then sautéed onions and mushrooms. And that's oven baked for about five minutes, so it's nice and crunchy, and the cheese is melted over. And then spicy ketchup goes on top. That is one thing that I recommend to everyone. Children love it. If there is any way to put that on a kid's menu, that would definitely be great for kids. And then the uh, bread, loin, and pork. That's my favorite. I've been making bread, loin, and pork since I've been five years old. I've been, uh, took um, the uh, back strap of a pork loin, and I fillet it to get all the fat off, cut it into uh, fillets, and then I let it marinate in milk and onions over eight hours. Once it marinates, then I tenderize it to be very thin and I bread it and pan fry it on both sides on lard until it's golden brown. And it comes with sauerkraut and french fries and uh, mushroom sauce that I actually learned recently about a year ago from a close friend of mine, amazing cook. Um, he taught me how to make this amazing mushroom sauce that goes great over the bread loin of pork. So that's what I've been using and a lot of people have been loving it so far. Well, um, I'm going to have to come and visit very, very soon because you just made me very, very hungry. Um, <laughs> Mark, tell me, uh, 2025, what are we seeing? Where is Mark? Has he conquered the world? Has he been to Australia? Has he got 50 uh, kielbasa buses? What's happening in five years? In five years, I am planning on selling my first franchise. By then, I'll have a well-established name, well-brand um, be able to be trademarked marked across the nation in uh, Florida and all over the U.S. And uh, by then, I'll be able to sell my. I I would say earlier three years, but I want to be a well-established brand by the time that happens. Mm. Once I grow a name and have something that people are familiar with, and you know, everyone asks whenever they're hungry, "Hey, where are we gonna go eat? Oh, let's go to McDonald's. There's McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's. I want to. I want to be the same thing. I want to be." Uh, I don't want to have, I don't, I want to have food for a good price, but also great quality behind it. And there, mm. um, 
I looked at a similar restaurant that I want to that I want to become. I want to be uh, there's a restaurant called um, Greek City Cafe, or there's another one. There's uh, another one around the corner from my house called Richie's Cheesesteak that I actually ate at today, and they are very similar to what I become want to become, but they don't have the passion to grow. A lot of right. Greek City has grown already, but like Richie's doesn't want to grow, and I want I want us to be able to have something to grow and sell. Uh, to the entire nation and eventually to the entire world because you know it's it's a very well diversified food everyone I haven't had uh, anyone tell me that they don't per se uh, in, not enjoy the food that everyone loves it and not only that and especially in Eastern European East, Eastern Europe something like that can grow over there uh, everyone loves Polish food so mm. every Polish food Polish sausage is uh, one of the better sausages I think personally so definitely we'll be able to be sold all over the world. And I, and I completely agree. And I, I have to say that I'm, I'm seeing that vision. I, I will look you up in five years and hey, you, you, better, you better have done it. But just to inspire you, there's, um, um, they, they haven't quite made it into America, but um, um, in Australia we have um, um, a restaurant called The Schnitz. And um, it, it's, it's, uh, have you heard of it maybe? No. Maybe not. I'll send you a link to it because it's very interesting. So it's run by a Polish guy. He's a client of ours too. Um, and his father came to Australia in 1970s. And in the city, he set up a tiny little um, shop with schnitzels. And oh, now wow. they have a, yeah, they have a franchise of, last time I checked, I think it was 66 um, restaurants like all over Australia, all over the world. So wow. it's all doable. You know, if you have the pa passion and the work ethics and mom named Kasia, um, then everything's going to work out for you, right? So right. we've got basically three minutes for questions. I'm going to hand over to, um, to Andrew, but uh, Mark, that was fascinating. That was really interesting. And you can, you can, you know, you, you can taste your food nearly through, through the internet, uh, but definitely you can see the passion and, and the real commitment to, to doing it right. So over to you, Andrew, for questions. Thank you guys for such a great conversation. We have many people asking, Mark, where they can get to taste your food. So you mentioned before that you're located in Florida, but uh, do you travel around the US or maybe outside Florida? Yes, uh, we, <clears throat> we travel all over, the, uh, all over the state of Florida. Next year we'll be traveling to South Dakota for Daytona, uh, not Daytona, sorry, <laughs> for Sturgis Bike Week. Uh, that will be our first stop for outside of the U.S. And then after that, we will see where we go further. We post everywhere that we go on Facebook, all of our events, all of our locations. We would love to travel more out of the state and serve more out of the state. But, I mean, I'm only one truck and got five people working with me. So we're trying to grow. And once we, once we grow, then you guys will definitely be more than able to try our food all over the state, all over the country. We'll, we'll be there for sure. We have someone asking, uh, Mark, if you're a chef. So how do you, how do you get to, um, to know, to, to get those cooking skills to prepare Polish, Polish food? I, I don't, I, this is a difficult question to ask because I met a lot of people that have Michelin stars and a lot of people that have been cooking for years and years and have been executive chefs and all that stuff. Um, to be a chef is very difficult to say if you are a chef. I think if you have the taste and if you have the passion and the drive, then you are able to cook. But the only way you really become a chef is, I think, if you... Have, oh, man, it's difficult. If you worked, if you, I think if you worked in several different restaurants and have, you know, really been in years and years of experience. For experience, think, yeah. Uh, Gordon Ramsay, for example, has over 30 years of experience and he only has, uh, I think he has two Michelin stars. So by the time, you know, you can call yourself a chef, you have to, you have to just bust your ass. That's all I can say. You have to study and it's just anything like going to school to be an engineer or anything that you want to do. You just have to study, study, study. I'll, in uh, next year for winter, actually, I'll be leaving to Austria to learn how to cook more for a high-end hotel. I'll be serving over 500 people a day. So I am expanding my experience just so I can give back to my business and give back to the community and, you know, for the, for the love of food. And I know there's other, you know, other people would say, well, like my mom, for example, she has over a thousand hours of teacher's training for yoga. 
So if you have, if you want to become a, a yogi teacher, like my mom or a guru, as most people call her or a chef, like most people call me, then you have to put time and effort and experience in. But it's also whether you have it or you don't have it, right? So it's, a, it's not that you're born with it, but it's more about um, wanting to become who, who you're going to become. So ha having that, you know, it's a bit of a cliche, but having that vision and that work ethic and, and yeah. really, you know, putting yourself out there. And, um, you know, wh whatever you choose to be your life passion, I think wh one of the things, you know, and it, it's not just for, for the college people, of course, but... Um, one of the things about the Polish community is that we are like that. We, we, we yeah. are hardworking and we'll get there, right? Exactly. Exactly. I, I would say, I always, I always say this to myself, is hard work will always beat talent. So if, even if you have it or you don't, hard work will, no, any day, any time, any sport or any work or anything you do, hard work will always beat talent, no matter what it is, because talent has it too easy and hard work is pushing and, keep, and won't stop. The drive is just there all the time. So right. I've had... I think, I don't know, like 30 different jobs. So I've, I have experience in all different types of fields, automotive, engineering, uh, art, cooking, uh, construction. Um, yoga. Well, computer. Yeah, yoga. Yeah. So, I mean, it just whatever you want to do is what you have to keep going for and just keep sticking with it. I, I think that's, um, that these are great words to leave us with, Mark. Um, I um, sincerely wanted to thank you for being part of this. I really enjoyed it. I um, really, truly really wish you all the best. Whenever I come to Florida, I will come and, you know, have a, have a what, what is it? What did you say? You have 12 different dishes? I'll, I will taste every single one of them, trust me. Um, <laughs> if, if you want to swap Austria for Australia, you know, you know where to come. Uh, but we, we, we wanted to thank you for being such a good sport. And even though we didn't get to speak to your mom, Kasia, or your dad, just say hello and thank them for, um, yeah, for having such a wonderful son. Because I think, um, you know, it's so very clear that you are ambitious and you're going to achieve your goals. So we, we just wish you all, all the best and thank you for being, um, uh, it's gone dark behind you, by the way. Um, is it still raining? Yeah, oh, it's pouring out right now. Ah, it's okay. nighttime now. What time is it? It's 7.30. Yeah, it's starting to get dark here. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, and I'll just hand over for the last few words. Um, and we will see you on Facebook with your Kielbasa bus. Yeah, thank you so much, Eva. I really do appreciate it. And I will look forward to speaking with you another time. And if you ever want to do an interview with my mom, because I'm sure she'll be more than happy to do it. <laughs> hey, she's next on the list. But, but do say Perfect. hello. And uh, we want to see the new tattoo that she's got. And yeah, different color hair maybe. When she colors her hair, we, we'll get her online, yeah? get a rainbow color that's it that'd be amazing <laughs> but thank you so much uh, and thank you everybody for watching thanks mark Best thank you much. everyone bye